Hello and welcome back to the next video in our series where we are exploring the VBA program language. In today's video, we are going to cover operators. So in the last couple videos, we talked about data types and variables. And so we need really just one last component until we can actually start going out there and writing some decent sized scripts. And that last component is operators. And so with operators, they're in four different categories. We've got arithmetic operators. So those are operators where we can perform different mathematical or numerical operations. Next, we have comparison operators. So this is where we can compare two values and determine whether the statement is true or false. Next, we have the logical operator. So this is where we can compare two statements and see if they are either true or false. And then finally, we have string operators. So those are the operators where we can now perform different operations on strings. So I'm gonna jump in my VBA editor and we'll just get started. All right, so the first group of operators that we're gonna talk about is the arithmetic operators. The first one is the plus one. So if we use the plus sign, that is adding two numbers. If we want to subtract two numbers, we've got to use the minus sign. Next, if we want to divide two numbers, we've got to use the forward slash. At least I think that's the forward slash. I always get those ones confused, to be honest. But I'm calling that forward because I think that's going forward. Next one is the multiplication. So if we want to multiply two numbers, we just got to use that asterisk sign. And then I call this the little carrot hat one. But if we want to use the power operator, we ought to use the carrot hat. And so this is basically saying 2 raised to the power of 2, which is 4. Uh, we have a special one. It's the integer division operator. So that's the opposite direction slash. So in this case, it's the backward slash. And in this situation, the integer division operator will divide two numbers, and it will return the integer to us. So even if there is a remainder attached to that number, it's going to cut it off, and it's just going to return the integer. So in this situation, 4 goes into 7 one time, but not the last time. So it returns a 1. On the flip side, we've got the modulus operator. So that actually returns the remainder in that case. So in this situation, 3 goes into 8 two times, but it has a remainder of 2. So it returns that remainder back to us. So in this example, it returns 2. So that's the arithmetic operators. Let's go on to the comparison operators. OK, so with comparison operators, we compare two expressions and return a Boolean value that represents the relationship of their values. So we can use this when we're comparing two numeric values. And in some cases, we can actually use them for do using strings. Uh, with the strings ones, it's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to explain that one in a later video. I don't want to confu confuse you guys at this point. So we'll just keep it simple for right now. Uh, the first one is the equality operator. So this one just tests for equality. It's 23 equal to 33. That is definitely false. They are not equal. But 10 is definitely equal to 10, so that's true. Next, we have the inequality operator. So is 23 not equal to 33? That's false. I mean, sorry, that's true now. And then in this situation, is 10 not equal to 10? Well, that's false now. So that returns false. Next, we have the less than operator. So is 23 less than 33? That is definitely true. Is 10 less than 10? That's false. They're equal. Is 23 less than 12? That is false. Next, greater than. Is 23 greater than 33? That is false. Is 10 greater than 10? That is also false. They are equal. Is 23 greater than 12? That is true. Less than or equal? Is 23 less than or equal than 33? That is true. Is 10 less than or equal to 10? That is true because they are both equal. Is 23 less than or equal to 12? That is false. Is 23 greater than or equal to 33? In this situation, it is false. So now we're on greater than. Is 10 greater than or equal to 10? That is true. They are both equal. Is 23 greater than or equal to 12? That is true also. Last type of property that we're going to talk about is the type of property. Say I have an object and I want to test whether that object is a certain type of object. I would use the type of operator. So I use it in an if statement. 
if the type of my object is the type range, then do something. So what this is evaluating, it's asking the question, I've got an object, what is the type of my object? And if the type of my object equals the object I'm looking for, then do whatever is part of that if statement. So that's what this is doing. It's the type of property. It's a comparison operator. So this comes in handy sometimes when we're working with different types of objects and we only want to call certain commands if uh, that particular object, the one that we're working with, actually is that object. We don't want to return an error otherwise. Next group is logical operators. So there are two in here that I'm sure you probably haven't heard of, or if you have, even even better, because I didn't hear about it before this video. So first one, and operator. If both statements are true or false, then the entire statement is true. So keep that in mind. They both have to be the same. So is A not equal to zero? That is true. Is B not equal to zero? Ooh, that is false because B is definitely equal to zero. So in this situation, this would return false because this is true, but this is false. So the entire statement is false. With or, only one of the expressions has to evaluate to true. Does A not equal zero? That is true. Does B not equal zero? That is false. But because one of the statements is true, the entire statement is true. So this entire statement is true. Not operator. That just takes the opposite of whatever was returned to us. So we know this statement returns a true because we saw up here it returns a true. So what's the opposite of true? False. That's what not does. Not just basically takes the opposite of what was returned to us. Then we have the XOR operator. If one statement evaluates to true and only one statement evaluates to true, then the entire statement evaluates to true. So in this example, only one, only one of the statements is true. So the, then the entire statement is true. It's very important that you understand with the X or operator, only one statement is allowed to be true, not the other ones. Here's kind of a special one. You don't see it used that often. The equivalence operator. So if these statements are equivalent, to me, I kind of think of it as like an and in a situation. So in this situation, this is true and this is true. So the entire statement is true. I don't see it used that often. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen it be used, but it's kind of good to know it exists. But really all it's saying is, are both statements equivalent? If they both are equivalent, then the entire statement is equivalent. Oh, this is a fun one. I didn't hear about this one until I started doing research on this video. The implication operator. This is a weird one. If A is true, then B must be true. So where would we use this? To be completely honest, I really can't think of any example in VBA where I would use this, but it's more related to, I would say, like axioms. So say there's like a mathematical axiom where it's like, hey, this happens, then this must happen by implication. So it's connecting the two, but it's just doing so in this very like direct way. And so again, I can't really think of any examples in BBA where we would use it, but I just kind of thought it was cool. And I was like, hey, like this is something I haven't seen before. So I thought I would share it with you guys. And even if you can't use it in BBA, you know, maybe it's date material. You know, you go on a date and you're like, hey, I want to talk about the Implication operator, they'll leave in a heartbeat, but that's beside the point. Next group, string operators. Okay, so with string operators, first one we're gonna talk about, the one that we use for comments. Anytime you put an apostrophe in front of a string, it's commented out, so it doesn't run. It's kind of there for us to read and understand what's going on in the code. Uh, in this little next section, all I did is I just defined two strings. That's just to explain the examples. If we want to combine two strings, we can either use the plus symbol or the ampersand symbol. So this will combine these two strings and a little space in between. 
Personally, I like this one. I like the plus one. It just looks cleaner, and I don't know. Ampersands, for some reason, they just they kind of throw me off when I see a bunch of them, so I don't like them. If we want to combine multiple lines into a single line, then what we do is we use a combination of two operators. So we use the either the ampersand or plus symbol, and then we use this little underscore one. So again, we have a string here, plus, there's a little space, and then there's an underscore, then another one, plus a little space and an underscore, and then finally the last line. So you can use the ampersand as well. Either one will combine multiple lines into one. This is kind of a neat one. I didn't know about this one until probably like a year ago, to be honest. Um, but you can actually combine multiple lines of code into one. I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing that because I think that takes away from the readability. And I'm a big you know, proponent of readability. If I can't read it, it's really hard to understand it. And so use this sparingly. <laughs> Don't use it all the time and use it in very select situations. But if you want to combine multiple lines into one, so like, for example, I want to combine this for loop into a single line, I just got to pass through that little colon sign. So this takes section one, colon sign, section two, colon sign, and then finally the last section. So that is how you combine multiple sections of code into a single line. So it's there if you want to condense, but again, use it responsibly. The last thing I want to see people do is putting tons of code into a single line when really it doesn't need to be in a single line. But other than that, that was the last section that we were going to cover. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you could like the video, that would help out a lot. When you like the video, it's easier for other people to find. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos on different topics. Um, and then finally, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again, guys.